Welcome to the Moved to Meditate podcast. I'm your host, Addie DeHilster. This is a place for vibrant discussions about mindfulness, movement practices, and ways to find more balance and presence in daily life. Here, you'll find resources to help you progress on your path, as well as insightful conversations with mindful movement, yoga, meditation, and Dharma teachers from a range of traditions. On this podcast, we spotlight embodied approaches to mindfulness and the more contemplative aspects of movement practice. Listen in and connect to a community of like-minded practitioners. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. It's been a little while. It has been a few really extra busy weeks here. One thing was that I took a wonderful trip down to Los Angeles to lead a retreat and have a mini reunion with some of my friends and yogis from my former studio down there, Spiral Path Yoga. And then this past Saturday, we officially kicked off this year's Mindful Movement teacher training with a fantastic powerhouse group of participants. So there's just been a lot going on. And then I had a couple of days in there where I wasn't feeling so great and I was sidelined by headaches and fatigue and things like that. So I didn't anticipate taking three weeks off from the podcast, but sometimes you just have to let go of your ambitious plans and roll with the way that life is unfolding, right? Speaking of which, that brings us to the topic for today's episode. (laughs) I am glad to be back today with a new episode. And what I felt inspired to talk about is wise effort, or sometimes called right effort. This topic definitely relates to my process of working and resting during extra busy times, like what I was describing lately and just in general. But practicing wise effort means being mindful of how you're using your energies and your attention. And whether that is moving you towards fulfilling your intentions or not, and This is something we can really look at in our meditation practice or in our movement practice and hopefully apply in the rest of our life's activities. This really asks us to observe how our habits around effort may sometimes cause us excess stress or on the flip side, be limiting and cause us to miss out on trying or seeing things through. Wise effort is one of the teachings in the Buddha's Noble Eightfold Path, which is a very core part of Buddhist teachings that lays out the relationships between many facets of mindfulness and intention and integrity and how we can apply our wisdom through all of our actions. And another reason that I was inspired to bring up this topic on the podcast this week is because I use it a lot in mindful movement classes. So I thought it would be good to dig a little deeper into what I mean when we're in class and I encourage you to practice wise effort. The current live series that I'm teaching also kind of brought this up because it's a mindful movement class incorporating resistance bands which I've never done before. (laughs) And I'll say a little more about that later. But just given the extra strengthening element that they add, wise effort has been extra important to consider in that resistance band series. So I hope that you'll find this topic useful. And I'll just briefly mention that if you're curious about further resources and ways we can practice together, you can always take a look at my website at movedtomeditate.yoga. Among other things, you'll find info there about the Move to Meditate class library, which is an online catalog of mindful movement, yin yoga, and guided meditation practices that bring to life the things we talk about here on the podcast. There is a free tier to the library membership where you can access a rotation of five different video classes each month. You can learn more and sign up for your free library card on my website at movedtomeditate.yoga slash class library. Just FYI. All right, back to our topic for today. Let's start with the Eightfold Path, which is where the teaching on wise effort comes from. The Buddha's Eightfold Path is a really central Dharma teaching that provides a frame for the whole practice of meditation and mindful living. It includes wise view, wise intention, wise speech, wise action, wise livelihood, wise effort, wise mindfulness, and wise concentration. 
For now, we'll hone in on effort, but maybe one day I'll do an entire series on the podcast to cover each of these because the Eightfold Path is an incredibly rich set of teachings to contemplate. I find that all of the different path factors kind of lead into one another. The Eightfold Path starts with being conscious of our views and how our views shape our thoughts and our intentions, which then direct our speech and our actions. And once we're on the track of intentions becoming actions, we need to pay attention to how we're engaging our efforts. So you can see how that really just connects the different elements of the Eightfold Path. When we're looking at our effort, we can look at what is the tone of the effort? Is it steady and clear or harshly striving? Are we working too hard and getting exhausted or not doing enough to build any momentum? It's a big area for inquiry when we start to look at how we relate to effort. One little note about terminology. I do tend to say wise effort, but you will often see it translated as right effort. And this is true for all the parts of the Eightfold Path. Wise speech versus right speech or right view versus wise view. We're talking about the same thing, (laughs) but many of my teachers use wise instead of right. And I like this as well because right can sound a little too binary. Like there's one right way or it's right and wrong, good and bad. It is rarely that clear cut. These are teachings that are meant to invite us into the gray areas. So we're meant to reflect on them deeply and not just stop with surface level judgments or assumptions or make rules out of it. So as others have noted, I think WISE does a better job of capturing the room we have here for nuance. In a few moments, we'll look more at how WISE effort relates to our movement practice and put a spotlight on that arena for practicing WISE effort. But first, let's talk about it more generally. When you hear about WISE effort from Buddhist meditation teachers, it's usually used in a few, three or four main ways. One would be generating the effort to practice and keep practicing. That's important. (laughs) Another way would be in terms of refining the kind of effort you're using in your practice. As in learning to apply energy in your practice, but without striving and grasping at the outcomes you want. Wise effort is also the effort to bring our attention back to the present moment when we're seduced once again by distractions. And it's the effort to make ethical choices or to avoid acting out of reactivity. One more important one is the wise effort to be present with and bring clarity to our many mental and emotional states. Sometimes the wise effort supports us to sit with something that's challenging. Other times we engage wise effort to redirect the mind because We're overwhelmed or falling into a habit track that we don't want to reinforce. So first we observe with our curious, non-judgmental mindfulness, noticing whatever is arising in the present moment. And sometimes it's enough to just be mindful, to stay with it and let things take their course. And you hear this aspect of mindfulness emphasized a lot, the just being present with what is, because it's a hugely important skill. However, that isn't the only tool or skill we have, and mindfulness practice isn't always totally passive. Sometimes we become aware of something and then bring in wise effort to shift our attention or to cultivate a healthier state. It is part of the practice to guide the mind toward what is helpful and away from harmful states or harmful actions. We engage wise effort when we call ourselves back to the present moment and away from a state of worry or when we stop ourselves from saying something unskillful out of anger. I'm just kind of highlighting this because sometimes I think the idea of mindfulness just gets reduced down to being with what is just a little bit too much. And there is actually a more sophisticated set of skills and choices that come in after we notice and recognize what's up for us in any given moment. Wise effort would be part of that. For example, we are using wise effort when we cultivate wholesome mind states like loving kindness, compassion, joy, gratitude, or equanimity. And in the Buddhist texts, there is a teaching called the Four Exertions, which describes four aspects of wise effort. 
And I'll put a link to this in the resources if you want to dig a little bit deeper. The four exertions are guarding, abandoning, developing, and maintaining. Guarding is to prevent harmful states or unskillful actions from happening, to sort of train yourself away from danger zones. Abandoning is the effort to eliminate or reverse harmful states or unskillful actions that have already arisen. Developing is to cultivate helpful mind states and skillful actions. And maintaining is what it sounds like to nurture and to maintain and keep those wholesome states and skillful actions going once they do show up. So this practice of mindful wise effort is all about being aware of what we are doing, what we are not doing, what is helpful to support or to stop, and how we go about doing these things. I'll give a few examples of how I practice with this. I've been working on this episode in little batches over the last two weeks because of everything I mentioned at the top. And on one of the days, I was trying to write some notes for it. I was kind of stalling by scrolling around on social media, knowing in the back of my mind that I was eating into my time for planning and writing this podcast episode. And I started to feel a little time pressure, but my mind was just kind of tired and foggy that day. Like, remember how I said earlier that I'd had a few headachey days last week? It was just feeling a lot easier to play around (laughs) on social media rather than focus on what I had planned to do. But I noticed all this and decided to use my wise effort to shift my attention away from distraction and get back to working on this talk. There was a little resistance, but once I got rolling, I was happy to be back in alignment with my intention. And just that had a way of kind of freed up some energy, actually, just to not be in conflict with my intention. Coming back to my work wasn't a big forceful move with a bunch of self-judgment. And if I was really too tired to do that work at that moment, I know I would have given myself a real break. Like, as in not just scrolling on social media, but like going to lay down for a while or doing some movement or something more nourishing than being on my phone. (laughs) So wise effort, it's important to, to notice it's not about being harsh or uncompromising or just like sticking to the plan no matter what. It can be firm, but in a gentle way. It is clear, but also kind. I also think about wise effort a lot in terms of my physical energy. And despite the previous story, I am usually much more of an overdoer than an underdoer. (laughs) So wise effort sometimes for me means backing off and conserving effort. I always have a long list of things I want to do. And when I do something, I tend to do it all out, which is not always a bad trait, but sometimes it gets out of balance. I've undone a lot of that overdoing tendency in my yoga and movement practice over many years. And now there's not a lot of striving there for me anymore. That's an area now where I really know how to be gentle with myself. But I still notice plenty of tiny ways that I over effort during the day when I'm not paying attention. Like being overly optimistic about how much I can get done in a day is probably my most common one. Or a funny example that I always remember from when I had my yoga studio. As any studio owner will tell you, a big part of the job is to sweep and mop the floor constantly. (laughs) It was an amazing teaching on impermanence. But I would be sweeping the floor and would often catch myself gripping the life out of the broom handle or pushing down on the Swiffer mop with way more force than is really necessary. And that sounds really silly, but I bet some of you have caught yourselves doing similar things, like gripping the steering wheel in your car, maybe. So that became a little wise effort practice for me, to sweep or mop without making it so hard and effortful. And the floor still got clean. So you can just look out for little places like that where you can play and explore wise effort and notice how it feels to adjust that. 
And if you're not as much of an overdoer as I am, <laughs> if you tend to find yourself more holding back or giving less than you could in places where it matters, remember that wise effort can also be about putting in some time and energy. It can show up as consistency, coming back again and again, sticking with something. And this is certainly how our practice gets stronger. We all know, for example, that if you want to develop a muscle, you can't just lift the weight once or go to the gym once a month. You have to do it over and over. It's not always easy to sit down and try to meditate or to show up for your movement practice or for whatever you'd like to develop, for the book you'd like to write, for the hobby you'd like to learn to do. <laughs> but this is how those good and beneficial habits grow and deepen through wise effort. Wise effort means realizing that, you know, maybe unfortunately, no one can do it for you and you have to put in the necessary energy with consistency. I think a lot about wise effort in terms of what I'm giving my attention and energy to. If there are things that are important to me that I never seem to have the energy for, that's a signal to bring some mindfulness into my efforts to look a little more closely. This applies in a similar way to time. How do we schedule ourselves? Do we leave enough time and energy for people we care about, projects we want to get to, for our practice, for rest, for things that sustain us? How do we cycle through efforting and doing and resting? What do we consider a good use of time or a waste of time? All of these questions connect to wise effort. And just to add a little caveat here, how you use your time and energy and how much choice you have about that exists within the context of your personal situation, your social location, resources you have available to you, your life stage, and many other factors. So I'm not saying that super privileged, annoying thing of we all have the same 24 hours in the day because <laughs> some of us have a lot more help and freedom in our 24 hours while others have a lot more demands on our time and energy. So wise effort is not to be used as an ideal for judging ourselves or anyone else when it's challenging to find the balance we wish for. It's just a part of our practice, something we just continue to engage with and observe and work with. Okay, let's shift a little to talk about some more specific ways that wise effort applies in mindful movement. I'm going to use my resistance band series as just kind of the example and the muse to kind of talk about this, but any kind of mindful movement practice is a perfect place to observe your relationship to effort and all that it brings up. We can deliberately give ourselves opportunities to exert effort as well as opportunities to relax or back off. And so as I have mentioned a few times, I am currently teaching a class series with resistance bands, which has really highlighted this wise effort theme. I like resistance bands as a prop, and I find that most of my students already have one at home, probably because a lot of them have been through physical therapy at some point or another. <laughs> and it seems like more of them have a resistance band around than yoga blocks or yoga straps. So, so just in that way, it's kind of practical to use as a prop in my classes online. But usually when we think about resistance bands, we think of strength training. And I know from my yoga experience and from being kind of part of the yoga community that often when resistance bands are brought into a yoga class, some, some folks, not everyone, will kind of raise their eyebrows and get worried that things are going in too much of a fitnessy direction. And I can see that. <laughs> but it just seems also that we have a really complicated relationship with effort as a yoga and movement community. So that's just something I think about. <laughs> and so within all of that, I had some hesitation for quite a while before I decided to actually do this series because I wasn't quite sure about how resistance bands would fit into my mindful movement class without taking the focus off of the mindfulness part. My classes tend to be pretty gentle and to emphasize slowing down, but we can be mindful of anything, including effort and strength. And so I 
decided to kind of challenge myself and explore this. And I do enjoy playing with the bands in my own practice. So I really just got curious about how we could explore some mindfulness themes with resistance bands. So one way we've been doing that in the series is to practice being particularly mindful of the sensations of effort. We can know the sensations of effort through feeling the contraction of a muscle when we do something, or maybe feeling warmth building as we continue a movement. Maybe there are changes in the breath because of effort. Eventually, if we keep going, there's fatigue that builds in the muscles. So looking for those sensations when we're engaging in effort. The resistance bands definitely amp up the opportunities for this in class, and they kind of highlight what parts of the body are working in a different movement or a different pose. But you could really do this in any movement practice and with or without any props. As we've been getting to know those sensations of effort, we're able to use them as a way to know how much to do or when to stop or when to take a break. So instead of counting reps of a movement with a band or holding the pose or the shape for a set number of breaths or a set length of time, we've been just looking at the sense of effort and getting to know it and responding from there. So it's a little bit open-ended, like how long to do the move, and then we'll pause, but we each might stop at a slightly different time based on the sensations of effort and what we decide to do with that. <laughs> and what's great about this is that it allows us to individualize the practice. No two people have to do the same amount. And we're observing and choosing in the present moment. Like tomorrow, I might be able to pull this band up 10 times in this position, but based on what I'm feeling in my muscles right now, I'm going to pause at eight and let my body lead me rather than my mental agenda for the movement or like how many reps I think that I should do. We're also practicing this by being aware of our energy levels. When you check in with yourself at the beginning of a class, do you notice the sensations that tell you when you have low energy or steady energy or excess like agitated energy? If you are tracking your energy levels mindfully as you practice, it influences how you pace yourself and perhaps which variations of a pose or a movement you might do or how long you might do a movement before you take a break. You might notice if your practice is different after a good night's sleep versus a night where you tossed and turned. So rather than always expecting the same effort out of ourselves, we can really monitor how our energy is and meet that in the moment with the appropriate movement or with the appropriate rest. And we're also looking at the feeling tone that the sensation of effort brings up. Like when you experience effort in your movement practice, do you perceive it as pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? It probably depends, but at times we can, we can just notice this. Does this effort feel like strength or support? Or is the sense of challenge what's really in the foreground? Does that experience lead to certain thoughts, thought patterns, <laughs> or actions? You know, doing more or doing less. Then, of course, movement brings out our conditioning <laughs> around effort and around the body. In this particular resistance band series, we're actually inviting some effort, like more effort than I usually do, so that we can get curious about what happens internally. For those of us who have a tendency to over effort, it's interesting to notice if we have unconsciously linked effort to the worthwhileness, how we view the worthwhileness of a movement practice. Many people have an unspoken bias towards the harder is better attitude in movement because we are so deeply conditioned by messages around productivity and competition and the assumption that going hard is how we get the most out of what we're doing and that we always have to get the most out of what we're doing. <laughs> And we're also inundated by a lifetime of messages from the diet and weight loss industry that tell us we need to exercise hard, whether it feels good or not, because looking a certain way is so important. For others, working mindfully with a tool like the resistance band or with effort in some form can be a way of 
expanding your capacity or questioning limiting beliefs that you have about your abilities. Your wise effort might be about developing confidence that your body can handle challenges. You might be working through fear around areas of the body that have been injured or that have experienced pain. Or working through messages you internalized about not being strong enough or having stamina. We can observe all of these things without judgment. Hopefully our movement practice gives us a safe space to do that. And maybe those observations will lead to approaching things differently in the moment. Maybe not. But the idea is to notice as these reactions come up. This is how wise effort becomes an intrinsic part of a mindful practice of movement. So I'd like to end with two poems. One is on the do less side of wise effort, and one is on the more engaged side. So this first one is from Lao Tzu. Do enough without vying, be living, not dying. From wonder to wonder, existence opens. Simply trust. Do not petals flutter down just like that. And the second poem is called Wage Peace by Judith Hill. Wage peace with your breath. Breathe in firemen and rubble. Breathe out whole buildings and flocks of red-winged blackbirds. Breathe in terrorists. And breathe out sleeping children and freshly mown fields. Breathe in confusion and breathe out maple trees. Breathe in the fallen and breathe out lifelong friendships intact. Wage peace with your listening. Hearing sirens, pray loud. Remember your tools, flower seeds, clothespins, clean rivers. Make soup. Play music. Memorize the words for thank you in three languages. Learn to knit and make a hat. Think of chaos as dancing raspberries. Imagine grief as the outbreath of beauty or the gesture of fish. Swim for the other side. Wage peace. Never has the world seemed so fresh and precious. Have a cup of tea and rejoice. Act as if armistice has already arrived. Celebrate today. I came across that last poem a few days ago and I thought that it not only spoke to wise effort, but that it really spoke to what is going on in the world right now with all the conflict and trauma in the Middle East and all of the confusion and helplessness for those of us looking on unsure of how to help. Wise effort is also part of our practice of taking action in the world. That's a really big topic for another podcast. So I'll leave it here for today. I hope you found this exploration of wise effort useful and Maybe you found a few pieces to ponder further in your practice. Thank you so much for listening and for waging peace in your own corners of the world. Be well until next time. So that's today's episode. If you enjoyed this conversation, please share it with a friend, subscribe on YouTube, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and help others find it that way. To learn more about my work, the Moved to Meditate class library, courses, or teacher trainings, go to movedtomeditate.yoga. This is Addie D. Hilster. Thanks so much for listening.